Hello everyone, Simon Says here. So today I want to talk about the spawn mechanics of enemies within Helldivers 2 because I think the entire system behind this is really important to know and understand if you want to go further into the difficulties of the game. And also, there's a little bug in the game for the automatons, but I'll get to that later in the video. But before we jump into the video, I want to thank you all for helping me on this channel. I did a stratagem tire, I know it's pronounced tier, but there's a meme within it. And if you've seen the video, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, thank you all for just blowing up the channel. That video right now is about to reach 70,000 views. So yeah, it gave me a part name here. Thank you. With that out of the way, let's jump into the juicy content of this video. The spawn mechanics is the same for both the Terminates and the Automatrons. And just to make it easier for me to explain what is going on with the spawns in the game, I will refer to them being the heat or the map heat in this video. When you start out on a mission, you will obviously start on the lowest map heat that there is. And then over time, it will build up until a maximum threshold is reached. And then it will stay there until the mission is either success or failure. Before we talk more about the map heap, let's talk about what sort of different enemy spawns that there is in the game. You have the static spawns that will linger on a specific spot on the map. Engaging on these doesn't have any effect on your map heap. Then you have the reinforcements that will spawn in on main objectives, such as during the primary objectives or the extraction. Then we have the spawns on the nests. This goes for light, medium, heavy and stalker's nests. Lastly, you have the patrols. The patrols will spawn in whenever the map heat hits a certain threshold. The heat will work as a tick that goes up every second. Every tick goes into, let's say, a bucket, just to visualize it for you. And then when the bucket is filled, a new patrol will spawn. The bucket will be emptied by the spawn of this patrol, and then the entire process goes on again. When the patrol spawns, it'll move across the location you were when it spawned. If you manage to move from that location, then therefore, not engage in combat with it, it'll keep on moving through the map and eventually despawn. This means that the more map paper you generate, the more patrols will spawn and move towards your location. So that leaves us with the question, how does the map heat build up? Let's start with going over the things that doesn't affect the map heat. Time spent in mission. Yes, that's right. This came as a surprise for me as well. Engaging combat. Stratagem usage. Breaches or butt drops, the planet you pick, mission type, being in proximity of points of interest, using terminal or interacting with the objective elements, completion of secondary objectives. With all these things that doesn't affect the map heat, let's dive into what does affect it. Primary objectives, primary sub objectives, secondary objectives, enemy outposts, That'll be the Terminate's nests or the Automation's outposts. However, keep in mind that the light ones do not affect it. And lastly, we have the Extraction Point activation. The closer you are to one of these objectives, the more heat you can create. Let me give you an example. If I'm within 50 meters of the objective, I'll generate 100% heat of what is available. If I'm at 100 meters of the objectives, I'll be generating 50% of the max heat. And if I'm within 125 meters of the objectives, then I'll be generating 25% of what the max heat available is. The heat generation can never exceed the maximum threshold and every player has his own heat bucket. But when all players are close together, they will be calculated as one bucket instead of four. This means that when you're fighting the same objective, you want to stay close together to limit the heat being generated. Let me elaborate on that. If you have three players moving within 75 meters of each other's, then they are one bucket. But the fourth member is 100 meters away from the three others, then he will be generating a second bucket, which means he'll be doubling the amount of spawns from the map heat. And this keeps on going up. So if all four players are split in between with 75, 100 meters in between them, then you can actually quadruple the spawns of the enemies because you now have four buckets at the same time. Talking about the squad, the squad size also have an impact upon how much heat can be generated on the map. 
and therefore also how fast the enemies will spawn in. What the values of this is, I do not know. So what is the most efficient way to complete a mission? When you drop into a mission, you want to start out by farming up all the map materials while taking care of nests on the map. That being light, medium and even the heavy nests. When engaging in a nest or an outpost, you want to be moving close together to try and prolong the bucket's threshold filling up faster. The nests will generate heat, but they will only go as far as 50% of the max map heat threshold, and then it will linger there until you start progressing the main objectives. This will give you enough breathing room to gather up all the extras on the map, and depending on the extraction location, you might even be able to run by it and drop off all the materials so they will be sitting there waiting for you to go and activating the extraction point. Oh, and that bug I talked about in the start of the video about the Automatrons. Apparently, some patrols within the Automatron planets tend to walk directly to the middle of the map, and then they will stay there and never despawn. So do yourself a favor when playing those missions, and never go to the middle of the map. All this information is something I've gathered up by my own testing with my squad after reading a post on Reddit made from Gurgen Nation. I'll put a link for the post down in the comments. So huge thanks to him for testing this out. And I can back him up after my own testing. What he's talking about here is spot on. I hope this insight of the mechanics of the spawns in the game is going to be helping you out a little bit. It certainly helped me out a ton in the game. Just the fact that the map timer doesn't have any effect on the spawn zone on the enemies is huge for me. Because when we start out a mission now, we tend to use all the time we can just running around gathering everything we need together before we go into doing the main objectives. This also means that when it comes to calling in the mech suits, we save them until the end of the mission. Because that is where all the heat is going to be taking place and we need that extra fire support in the game. If you have any insights towards what I just talked about, then let us know in the comments. And hey, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If there's anything you want me to cover specifically about Helldivers 2, then let me know and I will look into it. If you're searching for a community to play Helldivers 2 with, then feel free to hit the Discord or come over to Twitch and see me over there. I tend to play with the viewers whenever I got the time for it. You can find the links for it down there. And that leaves us with only one thing to say. May you succeed. Or retreat to Valhalla. Take care. Goodbye.